Power versus heart rate. What's best? Yeah, controversial, uh, but combination of both okay. at the end of the day. Because there's a lot of heart rate fans out there. It's kind of like the rim versus disc debate, <laughs> heart rate versus power. But uh, I agree. Maybe we can talk about the pros and cons of each to give people a, a understanding of why they both work well together. Um, let's talk about my favourite, being power. Yeah. What are, what are the, let's talk about the pros of power. Yeah, it's obviously everyone's got power now, right? But the best thing about oh, it not is everyone, not everyone. Yeah, but, but a lot more people. A lot more people, majority yeah. of people. But the instantaneous measure of what your actual effort is, so it tells you exactly in the moment, every one second, you got a measure of how much power you're actually putting out. So that's the I think that's the biggest benefit um, that instantaneous measurement, and you can vary that so much, so you can be really specific about what you're actually doing. Yes. I like the analogy of going to the gym. Yeah. You can go, all right, you're going to start on two kilogram dumbbells and then you go to four kilograms, six kilograms or whatever it might be and you actually know what you're lifting. Yeah. Whereas if you're riding without a power meter outside of perceived effort and your physiological response, you don't really know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Power is your external measure for what you're at your effort. Yes. So, Heart rate is your internal measurement, so it's very hard to measure what you're actually putting out if you're just looking at heart rate. So power tells us exactly what we're doing. Yes, which then in turn, and this is where I've been criticised before, because I think for beginners just getting into the sport that have never built aerobic fitness before, which was me and I know a lot of people out there, for you to use heart rate as your measure, which we'll get to, which can be very variable and, and quite tricky when you're unfamiliar with it, while heart rate is much cheaper, a monitor, and power is more expensive, for a beginner, power is a lot easier to follow because it is like the weights at the gym. You're gonna ride 150 watts to hit a specific zone and off you go. So yeah. it's very, very good for beginners, in my opinion, because of that, it's very easy for them to follow. Yeah, yeah, there's no variability in the power, like it's exact. Yeah, the heart rate. unless you haven't calibrated it. <laughs> yeah, but even so, like it'll stay, it'll stay relatively the same. If you're putting out a general power, it's going to be the same. So it's yeah, it's it's right in front of you exactly what you're doing. Whereas heart rate will, it'll change. It'll vary, which we'll, we'll vary. talk about in a second. Um, so very easy to target a specific power output. Therefore, very easy to target a zone. Therefore, very easy for people just getting into the sport to start figuring out where they should train. What are the cons of power? Uh, obviously quite expensive, okay. um, but it's, it can hold you back. So people become the, the number, number per focus. So yep. it just, you focus too much on the numbers and not as much on what you're actually doing and it can hold you back a little bit. So okay. for example, let's say you're always looking at the power and you go and doing specific intervals to a set power all the time, but you never actually push yourself when you're feeling good. So it's a, it's a process to learn how you're actually feeling from day to day when you're doing specific intervals or when you're doing really hard intervals. You, to get the most out of them, sometimes you need to push yourself out of that comfort zone. So yes. if you're doing testing, for example, if you're looking at the number all the time, you may hold yourself back. So True. If you focus too much on the numbers, you might restrict yourself from improving too much. So okay. it's, the, it's a fine balance, but I think sometimes the... Uh, Focusing too much on the numbers can hold you back. That's a good point. It can also change your uh, your general cycling approach. Mm. I remember being called a power knob <laughs> by some of my friends when I first figured out zone two and I'm doing 200 watts and this is what I'm doing and they were racing up the hills and coasting down the other side and I'm like, I'm just doing 200 watts and they go, you've become a power knob. <laughs> <laughs> So there's that aspect to it as well. Yeah, we don't want to go that far. So you got to have okay. the you got to have a good balance. Like yes. you got to be the power knob one day and then enjoy yourself <laughs> the other day. <laughs> cool. Um, so pros and cons of power. What about the pros of heart rate? It's the internal measurement of what your your effort. So it tells us what your body is actually how your body is perceiving that effort. So it's like RPE. So if you're doing so 200 watts, your heart rate changes from day to day. So some days it might be 120 BPM, some days it might be 130. So it tells us what your actual body is responding to that external output. So that's one of the pros. Another pro is it shows the fatigue and sickness. So if your heart rate is dampened, you're probably gonna have a reduced heart rate. So you can look at your resting heart rate off the bike, it's gonna probably gonna affect it, your heart rate variability, but on the bike, it's gonna vary 
and you're gonna see some changes, big changes, if you've got fatigue and sickness. So we can really look into that and monitor it over time if yep. we've got some historical data there. It's hard for it to be an indicator without a benchmark. Yep. And that's why they go, like this is the hand in hand part, that's why power, if you know what you're, like for me, say zone two, 200 watts, I know what my heart rate typically is for 200 watts. So on one day, if it's a lot lower, it's a lot higher, and I'm going, oh, okay, maybe I'm fatigued, maybe I'm sick. So without the power there, the indicator of the heart rate, unless you're very familiar with heart rate training, yeah. particularly for like a newbie, becomes a bit tricky. So, yeah. so, so having that consistent measure with heart rate is like that those components that you just described being the indicator almost become null and void without power, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, exactly, um, yeah. But it is cheap, that's the other pro. Like you can just start measuring it straight away from what, what is the heart rate monitor, 80 bucks yeah, Australian or something one. like that, yeah. good one. You get one for maybe 40 bucks from China yeah. that electrocutes your heart as you're riding. <laughs> yeah, well most people have got watches, like it's, you can, like it's not as accurate as a heart rate strap, but most people have a watch that you can measure heart rate. So it's super easy to get into it and start looking at the numbers. But yeah, again, at the end of the day, if you're not comparing it to power, there's no, Measure, measurement there to measure progress. Yeah, to know if you're having a bad day or a good day, external to feel. Yes. And as you become more wiser as a cyclist, more experienced, you will you will feel that. And that's why the heart rate advocates out there go, no, hang on a sec, heart rate's been around for years, people are trained with it, I train with it, it works. It's yeah. like, yes, but it takes time for you to, I guess, become intimate with it yeah. without power. Yeah. With power, you can become intimate with it quite rapidly. And we'll give an example in a second. Perhaps we talk about the cons of heart rate, which we've kind of con sort of segued yeah, into yeah. already, haven't we? I guess the first con is if you're focusing purely on heart rate, it's very slow to respond. So if you're doing a, let's say a threshold effort, it's probably gonna take anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes for your heart rate to get up to the desired zone. So if you're focusing purely on heart rate and you go super hard to get your heart rate to a specific zone, you're probably working way above that power. If you're looking at a power comparison, you're probably looking way above that actual zone. So you're not working specific physiology if you're focusing on that and you're trying to get it up really quick, for example. So yeah. it's heart rate's very slow to respond um, and it'll generally drift over time as well. So. If you're looking at, a, again, a threshold effort, a 10, 15 minute threshold effort, if you keep your heart rate at the same, if we compared the same file with power, you probably, power's gonna drop off. So you're kind of missing that extra little bit that you would get if you were um, looking at power as well. So slow to respond and it drifts over time or stays the same, whereas power will drop off. Yes, 100%. I've done some tests myself, and of course everyone's different, but looking at, say, a VO2 max effort, and seeing how long it takes for my, actually going to VO2 max with power and seeing how long it takes my heart rate to get to VO2 and it can yeah. be over a minute. Yeah. So as you described, if you're a beginner, you don't really know that. So you go too hard at the start of the effort to try and get your heart rate up. Mm. And let's say you're trying to do a VO2 max effort, maybe you've gone to anaerobic to get to VO2 max. And then because you're cane, because you've gone to above VO2 max to get your heart rate up, you slowly drift down past VO2 max into your threshold because you're stuffed. So yeah. you never really even properly train the zone. Yeah, and physiologically, you're still hitting your VO2 max in that specific example, but it's not teaching you how to do measure yourself a measured effort. Like you, anyone can go out and go all out for 30 seconds and hold on for as long as they can, but that measured effort teaches you how to tap into specific physiologies. So mm. if you just, it's not heart rate. Heart rate training isn't specific physiology. I would say it's not as specific. Mm. Okay. And the last one, which we've, is kind of a combination of what we've talked about, it, it's very variable. So it can change based off how much sleep you've had, how much stress that you're going through at work, um, yeah. how much fatigue that you've had in training. Yeah. Yeah. The list keeps going on, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. One day to the next, your heart rate's going to change. Even at the zone two, if you did exactly the same power, um, it happens all the time with RCM members. So one day they'll do exactly the same power and heart rate's lower or heart rate's higher. It's not necessarily always adaptation. Sometimes it is adaptation, but knowing your heart rate and how you feel. So you can't just look at heart rate and say, I was lower or higher today. You got to, why, why was it lower or higher? Oh, I didn't get enough sleep last night. Or oh, you're fatigued. Mm. Or you had a stressful day at work yesterday. So, okay, you're fatigued. You didn't get good enough sleep. That's why your heart rate's low. I'm mm. fresh, so my heart rate's really high. So 
Heart rate's very context-based. You gotta look at what the context is to see what's actually happening with your heart rate. Without the context, it's a guessing game. Yep, cool. So, pros and cons of both. Why do we want both of them though? To measure over time, I guess, to see, like you wanna look at heart rate and what's happening with power. And if you get a good source of data and a time source of data, then you can actually see what's going on and get a con get a bigger data source over a specific power or a specific heart rate to see what's actually happening. So mm. people like you, myself and you have trained for 10, 15 years, know what sort of heart rate you would be doing at a specific power. So from day to day, if we go out and do a base fitness ride at 200 watts, if our heart rate's 10 beats lower or 10 beats higher, it's like, well, what's going on here? So you can kind of adjust your training, your power, based on what your heart rate is doing for a specific power. So mm. Same, same thing would go for a tempo effort or a threshold effort. If your heart rate's super high or super low for a given power, and you know that as a trained athlete and, and you know what your body's meant to do, then you can adjust that on the go. Mm. So with, that, with just power, you can't see what heart rate's doing. You, what, how you feel, you're only looking at RPE and power. So oh, RPE is my rate of perceived exertion. Yes, exertion. rate of perceived yep. exertion. So I'm, let's say I'm doing 300 watts at threshold effort. It feels super hard feels a lot harder than you did three days ago, but you don't have a heart rate monitor there. Well, what's what's your internal system doing? So mm. if you have heart rate and power, you can say my heart rate's higher or lower, my heart power's the same, I should either go easier or I can probably lift a bit here. So yes, absolutely. The both, looking at both is the best, best scenario. Mm. And I really like the example that we use with members when they're measuring their base fitness and, and they get really excited because the heart rate becomes an indicator of how their endurance engine yep. is um, adapting to zone two training. So let's use the 200 watts example at zone two. Maybe I'll start off by doing that at an hour and my average heart rate's 135 beats and I'm drifting 10 beats during that hour. After I do base training for eight weeks, my heart rate's gone from 135 average to maybe 128 and I'm drifting three beats instead of 10 beats. And it's like, oh, holy moly, that's, that's an indicator that you've improved fitness. And without both, yeah. you wouldn't know that. No, Yeah. yeah, exactly.